The Next Step in Social Evolution I will be describing what a resource-based economy is and the nonprofit organization which is working to attain it. The information, images, and videos presented here were obtained from www.resourcebasedeconomy.org. Resource-Based Economy, NPO, proposes an alternative socioeconomic system unlike anything that has gone before. This is an attainable vision of a world where science and technology are intelligently applied with human and environmental concern. This system maximizes the quality of life rather than profits. We call it a global resource-based economy. Resource-based economy is a veritable blueprint for the genesis of a new world civilization based on human concern and environmental reclamation. It proposes a holistic social design in which automation and technology would be intelligently integrated to maximize the quality of life rather than simply profits. Undesirable behaviors are products of long exposure to detrimental environments. If we wish to surpass the limitations of our present-day society, such as war, hunger, poverty, and bigotry, we need to make changes and arrange society very differently. Most of our problems today are technical, but we still look for solutions through political means in a monetary system. We have the resources. Money is an interference because it limits our ability and it limits our dreams. Modern society has access to highly advanced technologies and can make available food, clothing, housing, medical care, a relevant educational system, and at the same time develop a limitless supply of renewable, clean energy such as geothermal, tidal, solar, wind, and more. The solutions lie in the intelligent and humane application of science and technology and more appropriate resource management in order to supply goods and services to everyone equitably, enabling the entire global population a very high standard of living. We don't have enough money to accomplish this, but we do have enough resources if we initiate what Jacques Fresco calls a resource-based economy. This is where all goods and services are available to everyone without money, credit, barter, or servitude of any kind. For this to be attained, all resources must be declared as the common heritage of all the Earth's people. Imagine the possibilities of an unprecedented mobilization of scientific and technical alliances toward problem solving without the interference of money or politics to initiate global unification and restoration. Resource-based economy would start with a systems approach to city design using highly effective construction methods emphasizing the conservation of resources. The first city would be a huge research center, making automated systems for the next city. It would be a place where we would disseminate information as to what sustainability really means for the future. The aim of the city is to constantly maximize existing and future technologies with the sole purpose of enhancing all human life and protecting the environment. The society I'm talking about is global cooperation, where all the nations work toward improving the lot of humankind. Now, why do that? Because the smarter people are, the richer and more secure everybody is. We have the tools at hand to design and build a future that is worthy of the human potential. It is imperative that we continue the process of social experimentation in order to transcend our present limitations and truly create the beginning of a civilized age.
The current state of technology allows us to turn Earth into a paradise. This has been the case for a long time. The ideas presented on this presentation outline a possible vision for humanity where the full potential of science and technology is unleashed towards social betterment. This is the description of a world where science and technology will no longer be used in ways that harm people or the environment. A world that surpasses war, violence, environmental damage, and the threat of malicious use of advanced forms of technology. It is time for humanity to unite under a common direction that will bring true security and prosperity to all. Our social arrangements shape our behavior and values. Presently, operating within the monetary system requires the pursuit of profit and not necessarily what's best for people and the ecology. Science and technology are racing forward. Our methods of social operation, however, are hundreds of years old and have not kept up with our present potential to produce universal abundance. The global resource-based economy system proposed here will allow humanity to finally utilize this potential. The primary function of this social design is to nurture each individual, make available all the goods and services, and supply the best possible education. This will enable all people to pursue whatever constructive lifestyle they choose. Today, Rapidly advancing technologies is on a path to take away the jobs of large portions of the population. In a global resource-based economy, technology will automate boring and dangerous human labor, giving people more free time and greater access to goods and services to enable them to address the greater challenges we all face. A global resource-based economy requires that we efficiently manage our planet's resources as a single system. By using technology and resources more intelligently, we can provide a high standard of living for ultimately everyone, free of charge. In such a system, there is no reason to hurt each other or the environment, and no advantages to be gained from doing so. This would surpass the need for stealing, embezzlement, corruption, and envy. These behaviors are not inborn but a result of being raised in today's society of scarcity. What is required is the redesign of our culture to operate within the carrying capacity of the Earth's resources and in accordance with the well-being of people and protection of the environment. This could usher in an age of cooperation, progress, and security between people and nations. The ideas in this presentation represent a fresh and holistic approach to global problem solving, but we realize some may disagree with them. All we recommend is for humanity to continue the process of social experimentation, to transcend the limitations of our current society in order to enhance the lives of all people. Only making superficial changes will not deal with the root causes of our problems. The foundation of our social system itself places financial barriers and tremendous constraint on the human potential, both individually and collectively. City with the Purpose The NPO resource-based economy aims to achieve a peaceful transition into a sustainable future where most present-day problems will be outgrown. No more deprivation riots, international conflicts, poverty, hunger, or suspensions of human rights. We would like to demonstrate these possibilities within a pilot city environment as designed by the lifelong work of Jacques Fresco. This city is unlike any other. It has a purpose, and that is to help usher in the next step in humanity's social evolution. This city will showcase our positive vision allowing people to see what kind of future we can build if we channel our resources and efforts towards social betterment. It will serve as a testing ground for an unprecedented mobilization of the latest science and technology, focusing on the restoration 
and protection of the global environment. The initial circular city will be devoted to developing fully up-to-date global resource management, environmental studies, and a holistic method for social operation. A global think tank will be formed to outline the next steps of development towards global unification and the betterment of every man, woman, and child on the planet. This will be humanity's lab for designing its future. This project is not a typical economic real estate development venture. It will be a living, breathing example of what is possible when the occupants are working to enable all people to intelligently thrive on this planet, rather than toward the self-centered aims of wealth, property, and power. We are currently witnessing the sad consequences of the latter approach. The NPO resource-based economy does not intend to sell or rent real estate for a profit, nor can anyone buy his or her way into the city. Our approach for the development of this and other city projects is philanthropic, with people who want to invest, not for profit, but in the future of civilization and a much better life for our children. Those donating would be helping to bring into fruition a real social alternative, a feature that designs the environment to eliminate the need for security, such as locked doors, bars on windows, guard dogs, surveillance cameras, gated communities, and the fear of kidnappings for ransom. Those who will inhabit the city will be working towards society's needs to evolve into a sustainable civilization. People within this living environment will have the opportunity and privilege to fully focus their efforts on solving problems to attain this common goal. The overall aim will be constructive and intelligent use of science and technology to improve the lives of every human being, and all findings will go back into the society to test its validity in solving problems common to all people's needs. Design Approach The first city will be a living example of a holistic city design that accomplishes the following conservation of energy while enabling a high standard of living for all, efficient use of material resources, utilization of highly efficient transportation, clean renewable energy production, rapid housing construction, automated production and distribution wherever applicable, self-sustaining food production, positive and negative studies of the effects of large projects, development of fully automated mining to product to recycling systems. Our innovative and systematic approach to construction processes will allow us to build cities relatively quickly with minimal costs and almost no waste of resources. We will demonstrate how we can live in harmony with nature as a city is immersed in lush landscaping. Only one-eighth of the circular city is thoroughly designed and then duplicated for a total of eight pie-shaped sectors. Intelligent overall planning does not imply mass uniformity. Cities would be uniform only to the degree that they would be designed systematically with prefabrication techniques, require less material, save time and energy, provide for ease of maintenance, implement redundancy for safety, and allow for exceptional flexibility and innovative changes. As a result, more resources will be available to help facilitate a much higher standard of living for all people, with the criteria of the architectural design and social direction being to house, feed, and clothe everyone on earth. Having architects design each individual building and structure is a tremendous waste of energy and talent if we are to achieve some type of sustainability. The city will demonstrate how an overall systems design approach using cybernation and automation and regulating the entire city will result in a symbiotic process. The city's environmental sensors will extend into all areas of the social complex for safety and efficiency. All aspects of the city are considered within the original design parameters, enabling it to work efficiently together as a total system. 
technical decisions are made on the basis of direct feedback from the environment. For example, electronic probes embedded in the agricultural belt's soil will automatically inventory the water table, soil conditions, nutrient content, etc., and act appropriately as conditions change. So the computers will eventually be put in charge of everything, except human behavior. And that's for the end of corruption, because they don't have ambition. Computers don't say, I'd like to be president of the world. I want to control people. They don't have a gut reaction. If utilized in this global systems approach, we could surpass the practice of political decisions based on power and advantage. And even computer experts are writing books now on the machine takeover. Watch out. They're not going to take over. They're going to be assigned to decision making. One of many other examples of such automation of decision making is in the aircraft industry. In some aircraft engines, they have installed FADEC. This has replaced the flight engineer. FADEC works by receiving multiple input variables of the current flight condition, including air density, throttle lever position, engine temperatures, engine pressures, and many other parameters. The inputs are received by computers and analyzed up to 70 times per second. FADEC not only provides for efficient engine operation, it also allows the manufacturer to program engine limitations and receive engine health and maintenance reports. For example, to avoid exceeding a certain engine temperature, the FADEC can be programmed to automatically take the necessary measures without pilot or engineer intervention. This method of electronic feedback and automated decision making would be applied to the entire social system to enable it to operate safely, efficiently, conserving resources, and maintaining a healthy environment. It will regulate all aspects of society such as air, water, transportation, agriculture, etc. It does not regulate people. That would be counterproductive and not needed. Unlike today's system, this approach does not reduce people to a substance level. Rather, it helps in making available all the amenities that modern science and technology can provide. In today's monetary societies, people are afraid of technology, and rightly so. The tools of science are directed primarily towards private profit, while individuals, corporations, and governments seek to maintain positions of advantage. Within a global resource-based economy, there will be no need to use technology in any detrimental way or to seek any advantage over others. Machines will be used to shorten the workday, increase the availability of goods and services, and lengthen vacation time, while alleviating human beings from dangerous, boring, or meaningless jobs. Technology could help us learn what it means to be a human being and a member of the world community as it benefits all people equitably. When we computerize everything and start producing things and make things available, it'll be too cheap to monitor. With the most capable computers, we can arrive at more appropriate decisions on a global scale. I have no doubt that machines will eventually be assigned more and more decision making. For example, Years ago, a pilot would look out of a plane and says, I think I'm about a mile high. But today they have Doppler radar, and they know exactly how high they are. So we don't want human guesswork anymore when a machine can do it. So I see the future as using very sophisticated computers that make decisions. Now, how do computers make decisions? They have their tentacles out into transportation, agriculture, so they can tell you when the soil is depleted when it has less water, because it has sensors built into the soil. The computer will be connected to weather departments, earthquake zones, everything. So I feel that eventually, government will become computerized. City layout. The size of the first prototype city will cover two square miles, about 5.2 square kilometers, and require flat land. A subtropical or tropical location is highly preferred to take maximum advantage of solar energy, along with other methods of clean energy sources. Good roads to the land, the location, 
International Airport, industries for building materials and fabrication plants should be accessible. The outer perimeter is part of the recreational area, with hiking and biking trails and opportunities for water sports. This sector also provides clean, renewable sources of energy such as wind, geothermal, solar and heat concentrators, and whatever else may be appropriate to the environment. Moving inward is a waterway surrounding the agricultural belt, with both indoor and outdoor agriculture. Next are the two rings containing the residential districts, high-rises and homes. Each of the high-rises is equipped with dining areas, child care, hobby shops, meeting facilities, recreation, medical care, and entertainment. Both residential districts feature beautiful landscaping with lakes and winding streams, a wide range of creative, innovative apartment buildings and individual unique homes will provide many options for the occupants. Adjacent to the residential district are the art, music, exhibition, entertainment, exercise, and conference centers. Moving toward the city center, there are the research labs, child care, science, and educational facilities. The eight smaller domes surrounding the large central dome hosts the access centers. The central dome or theme center contains healthcare, communications, networking, central planning, and orientation center. It also serves as the hub for most transportation services, which move people by trams anywhere within the city and by monorails from city to city. This minimizes the need for automobile transportation except for emergency vehicles. Using satellite communication systems and geophysical feedback will allow anyone to access on-demand information pertaining to weather, agriculture, transportation, and city operations. Fresco's designs are a showcase for the harmonious coexistence of nature and technology. In the Central Dome, you have child care, schools, dental care, medical care. In the production and design of the cities, we work out one-eighth of the city system, and then we reproduce it. These are access buildings where anyone can access books, a violin, musical instrument, anything that they want is free and available. These are your research centers. Everything studied in these areas is to improve your standard of living and everybody else there. There would be no lawyers, no bankers, no ad agencies, no insurance people, no sales people. Without money, you don't need any of those things. So you could go right into solving the problems that all of us have. That's what we'd be working on. Today, we're fighting over people who have different values and we're fighting over scarce resources. In the future, you won't have to do that. You'd be working cooperatively to improve the standard of living for everyone. So this is your recreational belt. There'd be art centers, music centers, recreational areas. There are tennis courts and these are golf courses, but the golf courses contain a clubhouse with all the golf clubs. So you don't have to bring anything out to the golf course. You stay there, play golf. When you're through, you leave your clubs there. Now these are where the residential district is. If you work in the medical center, you can live here if you choose to. So this is essentially a collection of variations in houses. Your house will vary to suit your needs. Now, some people don't like living in individual houses. They prefer living in apartments. This is a gymnasium, drama group, discussion group, recreation of all kinds. So the skyscraper in the future will offer more of the amenities. As we move out, we come to the indoor agriculture or hydroponic farms. Then there's also outdoor agriculture. So there's really no basis for crime, since anyone can access anything they need. No one's going to hit you on your head and take your wallet, because there's no money in it anymore. The monetary system has been surpassed. The city will host research, education, and media centers, 
with the intention to demonstrate how behavior can be directed towards constructive, collaborative, and creative endeavors if the environment enables this to be nurtured. The city projects will include, but not limited to, three primary departments. Research and Development At these facilities, researchers will work towards positive, collaborative living scenarios, both local and ultimately global in scale. The research results and products will be directly applied to the city, where every citizen will participate in short to long-term tests to demonstrate feasibility. Education Learning centers will provide relevant education and a constructive environment from which to generate and teach values that promote conserving ecological balance. Long-term visitors will study how the resource-based economy system works, behavioral sciences, the elimination of scarcity, resource management, the improvement of the human condition, various fields of science and technology, media presentation, preservation of the environment, and methods towards bridging the differences between nations and people. Media centers. Media plays an important role in teaching new ideas and constructive approaches to solving problems. We will develop magazines, videos, documentary films, animation, and positive gaming as well as virtual and augmented reality environments to present and introduce this new social direction for society. Some claim that limited resources prevent us from achieving a society with a very high standard of living. This is simply not so. We still have more than enough resources to achieve a very high quality of life for everyone. But it's time to move beyond failed programs and frustrations. The carrying capacity of the earth can be increased if we allow innovation to flourish. Innovative solutions can be applied now if we direct our attention to overcoming scarcity. We have the capability to intelligently apply humane science and emerging technologies to provide for most human needs and to reclaim and restore the natural environment. Fossil fuels such as oil and coal have allowed our civilization to progress to its present state of development. However, these energy sources are limited, non-renewable, and pose what may be insurmountable environmental threats. In designing this innovative city, we must harness new methods for generating energy where applicable. These include wind, wave and tidal power, ocean currents, deep ocean pressure and differentials, falling water, geothermal on both land and ocean, electrostatic power, hydrogen and natural gas, algae, bacterial, piezoelectric, phase transformation, and thermionics. Additionally, there is the untapped potential of Fresnel lenses developed for use as optical concentrators in solar power systems, and much more. To replace all fossil fuels, there's 30 times more solar available worldwide over land and high solar locations than we need to power the entire world for all purposes in 2030. And there's seven times more wind than you need to do the same thing. Wind, solar power, geothermal power, hydroelectric tidal power and wave power, all clean renewable energy sources that are available. We would need about 4 million large wind turbines to power 50% of the entire world for all purposes. You might say, well, that sounds like a lot. But keep in mind, during World War II, the world produced about 800,000 aircraft in the space of five to six years, and the U.S. produced 330,000 aircraft in four to five years. And so that was decades ago, and now we have better technologies and abilities to ramp up production. So it really comes down to willpower. It's not a technological or economic blockade to solving this problem. It's really a social and political blockade. Global Resource-Based Economy If we apply the same level of scientific mobilization towards social betterment as we do during a war or disaster, large-scale results will be achieved in a relatively short time. 
more time and effort must go into the collection of experimental evidence to support innovative social arrangements. Our practice of rationing resources through monetary methods is irrelevant and counterproductive to the well-being of people and our survival itself. Modern society now has highly advanced technologies and can easily provide more than enough for a higher standard of living for all. We could efficiently harness the abundance of resources on Earth by implementing a global resource-based economy. Simply stated, a global resource-based economy utilizes existing resources rather than money to provide an equitable distribution of goods and services in a humane and efficient manner for the entire population. It is a system in which all required resources are available without the use of money, credit, barter, or any other form of debt or servitude. In the world today, we have enough resources to solve most human problems. We can build cities, hospitals all over the world if we use resources. But if you can strip at all the money in the world, there's not enough money to build hospitals and housing all over the world and finance the education of students. But we do have enough teachers and enough buildings we can use for universities. We have the resources. Money is an interference because it limits our ability. It only has value due to scarcity. But if we can produce an abundance and make it available, people don't steal. They don't lie. They don't cheat. It is not money that people need, but rather access to the necessities of life without having to appeal to a government bureaucracy or any other agency. In a global resource-based economy, money is irrelevant. What is required are the resources, manufacturing, and distribution of products. In a global resource-based economy, the world's resources are held as a common heritage of all people, eventually outgrowing the need for artificial boundaries that separate people. This is the unifying imperative. While it seems that this is not attainable, if we think back to the times when a caveman had to protect his family from other families, then they unified and formed villages to protect themselves from other villages. Villages joined to become towns. Towns joined to become city-states. City-states joined to form countries. We now propose that countries become one planet, a planet that works towards a better life for all while taking care of our environment. If our planet ran out of resources, no matter how much gold or money or possessions you had, you could not survive. Our entire survival is based upon resources. What is really needed is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. A resource-based economy is based on the carrying capacity of the Earth and its resources. If you don't work in terms of existing resources, you're working in some metaphysical plan. In a resource-based economy, all resources would become the common heritage of all the world's people, and access to the necessities of life would be for all the world's people. There would be no more monetary systems or trade, barter, or any other system of human servitude. The use of redundant large-scale computer systems will not be for control, but to assist in defining the parameters of the global resource-based economy. All construction projects will conform to rigorous environmental requirements that are determined through scientific studies. Over-exploitation will be unnecessary when the need for profit is surpassed. In such an economy, production is accomplished entirely by automated machines with the resulting products available to all. A global resource-based economy utilizes the latest technology and fully renewable sources of energy to overcome scarce resources. A city within the system automates manufacturing, inventory, and recycling 
and provides a more relevant education for the needs of the future, along with total health care, all while furthering the design of future safe and highly efficient cities. It will also generate a new incentive system based on human and environmental concern. Intelligently applied technology conserves energy, reduces waste, and provides more leisure time. With automated inventory on a global scale, we can effortlessly balance mining, refining, production, distribution, and recycling. Interconnected sustainable cities utilize cyber centers, which coordinate industries, transportation systems, public health care, and the flow of goods and services. These cybernated centers would connect all cities and help with environmental reclamation. In the beginning, interdisciplinary technical teams would manage productivity until even these tasks are automated. The concepts of jobs and earning a living become irrelevant. The focus is on each person experiencing a full life by pursuing the things they find fulfilling while considering the well-being of the earth and everyone on it. A resource-based society considers us all vital to the system's continuous success and improvement. We are responsible both for our collective stewardship of the planet and for our relationships with each other. In a global resource-based economy, the human condition is of prime concern with technology subordinate. One of our vital shortages today is lack of creative thought and intelligence in ourselves and our elective leaders to solve these problems. The most valuable currently untapped resource is the potential of human ingenuity. With the elimination of debt while providing access to the necessities of life, fear of losing one's job will no longer be a threat. This, combined with practical education on how to relate to people in a considerably more meaningful way, could reduce much mental and physical stress leaving each of us unimpeded to explore and develop our abilities. People will get engaged in how to live, how to relate, to travel, scuba diving, restoring the reefs of the oceans that we damage, cleaning the ocean and the atmosphere. So much we don't know. And you go back to school free of charge, and every city will be a university city where you're updated on what's new. If the thought of eliminating money troubles you in some way, consider this. If a group of people with gold, diamonds, and money found themselves stranded on an island that had no resources, their wealth would be irrelevant to their survival. It is only when resources are scarce that money can be used to control their distribution. One could not, for example, sell the air we breathe or water abundantly flowing down a mountain stream. Although air and water are valuable, in abundance, they cannot be sold. Money is only relevant to society when resources for survival are rationed and people accept money as an exchange medium for the scarce resources. Money is a social convention, an agreement if you will. It is neither a natural resource, nor does it represent one. It is not necessary for survival unless we have been conditioned to accept it as such. In an economy based on resources rather than money, we can produce all of the necessities of life. Corruption is someone getting something they consider valuable out of what is considered an illegitimate act. Without vested interests or the use of money in a global resource-based economy, there is little to be gained by squelching opinion, falsifying information, or taking advantage of someone else. There are no underlying rigid social barriers to limit the participation of someone or to restrain the introduction of new ideas. The objective is full access to information, goods and services for all, a state of affairs that will enable people to participate in the exciting challenges of this new society. In contrast to today's national security mania for intruding on everyone's privacy in a global resource-based economy, no one need take from another. It will be socially offensive and counterproductive for machines to monitor the activities of human beings. But more to the point, there will be no reason for it. Distribution of goods and services without the use of money or tokens would be accomplished through the establishment of distribution centers. 
One can liken this to the public library of today. An automated inventory system can be connected to the distribution centers and manufacturing facilities, thus coordinating production with demand and providing a constant evaluation of preferences and consumption. In this way, a balanced load economy can be maintained. Shortages, overruns, and waste could be eliminated. But first, you take a survey of the Earth's resources. You don't leave it up to the opinion of somebody or a group of people. You find out what you have, and that gives you the parameters of what you can work with. So you find out where your technical personnel are, where your water is, where your arable land is, the health of the people and the needs of the people, and you build according to that. That will determine where your hospitals go and everything else. A resource-based economy operates as a balanced load economy. This means avoiding shortages and overruns, thus optimizing efficiency and conserving energy. There would be no excesses and little waste. It would be balanced to the environmental conditions and human needs. For instance, there would be no houses without people in them, or cargo trains traveling empty or stored in freight yards dependent on the business cycle for their use. This also ensures natural resources are not depleted as in our present system. A principal aim of this new social arrangement is to establish an environment that will encourage the widest range of individuality, creativity, constructive endeavor, and cooperation without any elitism, technical or otherwise. Significantly, a global resource-based economy would generate a far different incentive system, one based on human and environmental concern. This would not be a uniform culture, but rather one in constant process of growth and improvement. It also anticipates the stabilizing of the world's population through education until the population coincides with the Earth's carrying capacity. When population exceeds the capacity of its environment, many problems such as greed, crime, and violence emerge. As we enhance the lives of others, protect our environment, and achieve abundance, our lives will become much richer and more secure. If these values are put into practice, within a short period of time, we could achieve a much higher standard of living than the richest people of today, and one that, unlike today, would continuously improve. This proposal is not utopian nor Aurelian, nor does it reflect the dreams of impractical idealists. Instead, it offers fully attainable goals requiring only the intelligent application of what we already know. The only limitations are those which we impose upon ourselves. Many of these are excerpts from the book The Best That Money Can't Buy by Jacques Fresco who conceived the global resource-based economy. We don't want people to have loyalty to corporations or a country. We want them to have loyalty to methodology and loyalty to invention, meaning to improve everything that exists, to make them better, smarter, faster, and make them available to all people. That's the kind of loyalty that's needed. If China comes up with a new way of producing automation, congratulations. If Africans come up with a great idea, congratulations. No more loyalty to corporations to country, loyalty to the earth and to all the people on it, and to make the earth a far better place than it is. This is the kind of loyalty I'm talking about. This is the kind of pledge allegiance I'm talking about, to pledge allegiance to methodology. Looking Beyond the long-term goals of the resource-based economy, NPO, are to translate our findings into a global network of new, highly efficient cities. This network of cities will be dedicated toward utilizing the methods of science and technology to develop and achieve solutions to global problems, both technically and sociologically, and thereby focusing on the well-being of people and the protection of the environment. We plan on demonstrating how these integrated cities can function and cooperatively sharing their knowledge, findings, and resources towards these aims. They will be showcasing how the entire global population could ultimately thrive 
from this approach of balancing technology and nature and will serve as think tanks that will translate its findings into reality. This approach targets the root causes of our problems, designing an environment that does not generate scarcity, hostilities, or deprivation while providing a fulfilling and enjoyable place to live. This network of cities will serve as a scaffold for a new global society. Within the cities, we will educate the world through the living examples of the potential that can be achieved by implementing a systems approach to design, a different social orientation, relevant education, and global outreach to meet the needs of the present without jeopardizing the needs of future generations. A vision of efficiency, sustainability, and intelligent planning can lead us into marvelous new world of unlimited human potential. If we use science and technology with human and environmental concern, these cities will provide a vivid future showcase of the human potential, while working together to preserve the greatest gift we have, the resources and beauty of our planet Earth. In the final analysis, we are one people and share one planet. If we manage to arrive at a saner future, the tasks will be about solving problems common to all people. We have to anticipate that the Earth is our salvation. If we don't take care of it, no matter how many churches you build, we will starve to death and kill each other. The real challenges are producing abundance, reclaiming damaged environments, sharing and creating innovative technologies, and improving communications between people. I know we can build a far better world without war, without most crimes, without the need for prisons, and without the need for money. We can surpass that. We have the technical ability to make things available to everyone. All the wonders of technology have no meaning at all unless it enhances the lives of everyone. The vision of applied science can serve the common good. And though this goal has eluded human civilization for centuries, the possibility of a better life for all will depend ultimately on the choices we make today.